the major characteristics we were on the first one in which uh, we basically talked about how uh, uh, the youth so i'm experiencing some uh, network issues so i have switched off my video for now that's okay ma'am okay so we were talking about how the current youth is independent optimi uh, optimistic and open to the changing labor market that's there so uh, basically here uh, we are talking about how um, uh, you know the influence of family and uh, peers have reduced on the indian population as such and they are basically focusing on individual aspirations rather than you know following somebody else's aspirations they uh, feel that uh, they choose a particular career or vocation uh, based on the interest that they have in the field and they are also you know uh, looking at uh, uh, being an entrepreneur or you know also supplementing their employment with some other uh, income rather than only uh, looking at one source of income like for example if i might add that even if you are in uh, you know a regular job you are taking another part time job as a freelance worker uh, to you know explore your potential and to maintain interest in the field so we are seeing a degree of openness towards other forms of uh, uh, employment which was not earlier seen in the indian youth uh the second uh, aspect is that they need more guidance and uh, career counseling this uh, because as i mentioned earlier that they have lot of information available on lot of things so there is you know lot of asymmetry uh, in terms of the information that comes in uh, on aspects like jobs and skills and uh, you know how to set a realistic career goal based on your potential based on your interest and uh, you know uh, uh, career goal setting only does not mean that a person is choosing a particular career it also means that uh, you know you have to uh, uh, look at the time scale at which you are going to achieve each of the milestones in your career so uh, if you are particular suppose you are uh, choosing to be a psychologist so what are the things that you require to become a psychologist you need a degree in psychology you need a post graduation degree in psychology and after that from there where will you you know bifurcate you will uh, go for an mphil in psychology or phd in psychology or you will do both so this kind of information i am just talking about this field but this aspect this thing applies to every other field also setting a goal and then how to realistically achieve it and what are uh, what how much time it is going to take and where uh, you know at what point you have to decide what resource you are going to need these are the things that uh, will help you uh, realistically achieve a particular career now this information is there on internet but there is no guidance as to you know how to procure this information in what way and what information needs to be taken and what information needs to be kept for you know uh, uh, a long term vision what needs to be what information needs to be kept at for kept for a short term vision that is not there so there is a need for counseling when it comes to this thing that is bringing more symmetry in information setting of particularistic career goals and matching the skill set with the aspiration that you have now next one 
one is the um, they are interested in pursuing higher education and skills development. So uh, Indian youth is very very motivated towards having a postgraduate degree. More than uh, seventy percent is motivated for that, and ninety seven percent is motivated to at least have a graduation. So, uh, more the so all of them are mostly motivated in you know uh, getting a higher education because they believe that uh, education will improve their uh, skill set and will help in achieving uh, helping giving them uh, stability that is important for them in the future. Now the complexity is added because of the societal and personal, uh, uh, the social and cultural norms which are there in our country. Uh, in every region, there are different social cultural norms which are there, and that adds to the uh, complexity of youth that already is going on within. For example, there is a job stereotype that is there. Uh, uh, like uh, you should have, you should become an engineer, or you should become a doctor. You should take an MBA. You know there are stereotypes that are attached to all these different kind of jobs. Now these jobs are uh, definitely very very good and will give you a lot of stability in your life. But there is also a requirement to look at the aspirations and the interests that the youth has. When you don't match these and you ju just go by the job stereotype that uh, people have, then it becomes difficult for the youth to reach their potential. So there is a need to uh, change that kind of mindset. So there, first there needs to be an interest, then it has to be matched with a skill set and that in turn will decide the vocation that you have to take. The next one being role of social media and internet, which is a very, very huge uh, aspect when it comes to the Indian population. Many people uh, go for their, uh, you know, skill development and job opportunities and many other things through uh, social media. You have different web pages that you can follow. Uh, you, can, you have different apps that, you know, uh, help you uh, reach your goal. For example, those who are fitness enthusiasts can uh, follow a particular app for their uh, uh, development, physical development, and you know, which in turn gives them a lot of satisfaction mentally also. So this has a very big impact on them. Now, the point of using all these points that is major characteristics of Indian youth here was that that all these aspects can be taken into consideration in any kind of training that you are going to give them. That is uh, their, uh, uh, their optimistic nature, their independent nature, their need for guidance, uh, their need for uh, pursuing higher education, uh, the uh, need to break the stereotypes and uh, tell them to, you know, be aware about their interest first and improve their skill set and then decide the vocation and to use the social media and internet in a more positive, useful and healthy way. So these, these can be really capitalized upon any kind of training that uh, you give to an Indian youth. So that was the point of uh, taking this uh, aspect and taking uh, these characteristics into consideration in this presentation. So next slide. Now uh, we will look at, uh, uh, now we have discussed the scenario and the a global situation in which our youth is placed today. Now, but uh, uh, this is an age where actively change is taking place in the individual as well. So I have taken this model of change uh, as the basics, basis to understand the changes which are going to, uh, you know, help us understanding youth in a 
better way which is called the biopsychosocial model of change so next slide this uh, model basically says that an individual is a uh, result of an interactive system in which the biology social aspects and psychological aspects play uh, equal roles in uh, the development of an individual biology basically includes the physical health uh, genetic vulnerabilities and you know the uh, uh, any effects that you know uh, that a drug can produce in you drug does not mean uh, uh, you know drug abuse and uh, the substance abuse that uh, uh, that is used but it is basically any kind of illness that you have and any kind of substance that you take externally so all these things like uh, the uh, eating habits that generally have the, the generally youth has all these aspects are included in biology in social aspect comes the uh, social environment that is there in, uh, around the individual which includes friends uh, uh, and social support which comes in peer then you have family circumstances that is the family in which the uh, youth is growing up and uh, is seeing every day and the type of dynamics that are there in the family and in psychological aspect we look at you know how the interaction of uh, biology and uh, the social aspect is contributing to the uh, coping skills that one adopts the social skills that one adopts the uh, uh, how uh, uh, the youth manages the family relationships how self esteem improves as a result of that and how in turn the mental health of the individual is improved so none of this is independent of each other we cannot say that uh, you know uh, if uh, social and psychological aspects are okay but uh, biology is not fine then the individual it's okay the individual will be good in one aspect and not good in other aspects any problem in any of these fields will result in uh, you know problems in the other fields also for example if you have a particular illness that is let's say you just have fever okay if you have fever you will not feel like talking to anyone you will not feel like having friends around you and at that time you you uh, will prefer to lie down rather than you know uh, coping with the stress that is there in your environment that is you know you are not able to read but you if you are compelling yourself to read it is not possible for you because your biology is not aiding you in that you will not be able to play with anyone or you will not be interested in talking with anyone because your body is not allowing you to do that so it's important that all these aspects are uh, kept in balance so that a individual is able to uh, utilize his talents his skills to the maximum uh, abilities so now we'll see that what are the changes that take place in these different aspects when a person enters youth so next slide so when we are talking about youth and it the physical changes there are very rapid changes that take place in the body for present discussion i have taken adolescence and young adulthood both as youth and and one of the uh, major milestones of adolescence or the arrival of adolescence is through puberty Now, puberty is a very uh, uh, is an age where you have accelerated a uh, growth in terms of both physical aspects as well as mental aspects different changes take place in the body in terms of height weight a uh, sound quality physical appearance and uh, the changes that take place at the onset of puberty have long term consequences for the change happening within an individual 
so if the person is not able to adjust with puberty it has long term consequences and one more uh, aspect important in this case is the changes that are accompanied in attitude and behavior primary of which is the importance of sexuality now this is the age where you know uh, major changes take place in the uh, reproductive organs of uh, both of all genders so uh, what happens in this case is the uh, uh, and the sexuality becomes very very prominent and it needs to be accepted rather than you know creating a taboo around it the they and also the expectations that are there from the society when you are uh, in this age uh, you are not a child and you are not an adult but uh, uh, the expectations in our indian society basically the expectations of the society are that of an adult in this age so it is difficult for them to adjust to those expect expectations they eventually do but they do take time to uh, come in terms with this particular aspect and the third one is preoccupation with with physical appearance because the appearance changes a lot during this period of time because of the different developments in different body parts the preoccupation is there because as we discussed there is status there is popularity there is social comparison that's there so it becomes very important for them to you know look good uh, uh and what happens is because we have this culture where you know being thin is very very important having a good posture having a good body structure is very very important uh, to be you know accepted into the society to belong in the society there is that preoccupation and it is not good to uh, you know invalidate this particular uh, uh, preoccupation that is there rather than invalidating it give validation to them in this aspect and also tell them about the ways in which the physical appearance can be improved give them the concept of you know health what is considered healthy what is considered unhealthy because uh, eating disorders are very very common in youth and both the uh, cases where you know you uh, you are you become malnourished and you have other problems associated with it and uh, you know you are in the constant uh, cycle of eating binge eating and then vomiting Uh, because you are not able to because when you are anxious you eat and when you eat you enter the cycle of guilt and then you vomit and then becomes then it becomes a cycle so they are very very prone to eating disorders and this proneness to eating disorders comes with this preoccupation with physical appearance so if you you need to support this particular aspect that is the uh, the uh, preoccupation that's there and at the same time you need to guide them as to how to healthily achieve that the fourth point of physical change is fitting in why i have kept this aspect here is that because it's the easiest to do for a youth to fit into a particular society that is if you uh, follow the norms and uh, follow the uh, uh, rules which are there for your physical body to be accepted into the society you get easily fit in in the uh, environment so that's why it's very very um, uh, prominent in youth where fitting in becomes the uh, uh, central aspect of their uh, existence so that's why physical changes and uh, uh, controlling the physical appearance uh, is the cornerstone uh, of you know being accepted into the society for youth i'm not talking about other age groups particularly for youth 
सर प्लीज स्लाइड चेंज now coming to the next one which is the cognitive changes that take place in a youth uh, <coughs> uh youth marks the beginning of you know higher order thinking uh, and uh, initiation of higher order thinking in individuals so what happens is Uh, and uh, through various uh, research uh, both cognitive neuroscience research it has been found that during this age the major development takes place in the frontal lobe of an individual now frontal lobe of uh, the frontal lobe of your brain is responsible for uh, executive functions which include the planning impulse control and reasoning in an individual now if you will see the different uh, functions which are here of frontal lobe that is planning impulse control and reasoning these are all the things which help them uh to easily adapt to the social environment and the other environment that is there around them planning because this is the age where they have to decide on their career they have to decide on their future they have to decide how to go about different things in their life how to uh, you know fulfill the expectations so all this requires a particular blueprint that they need to form so this this is why the planning happens the regions where the planning happens are strengthened during this age second is impulse control as i told you the addictions are very very prominent in this age so uh, our brain uh, is already taking care of the cognitive development that happens in youth is already taking care of that uh, uh, part where the impulse control uh, function is getting more and more refined more and more sophisticated so that uh, this does not happen the addictions do not happen and reasoning also you know helps in uh, understanding what is right what is wrong what needs to be done how the things need to be done all these things our brain takes care of during the uh, youth age so though the global scenario is changing the global uh, aspects are changing but our brain is already programmed to deal with this kind of information if the environment is stimulating enough then in this age particularly an interesting aspect is how brain processes rewards and uh, pleasure now there are different activities and there are different training modules and there are different uh, things that a, that a youth is um, uh, expected to uh, fulfill and is expected to do now if the reward in that situation becomes apparent then you know there is a chance of repeating that behavior again and again for example if uh, uh, going uh, if uh, going to a particular um, place let's say that you are going to a family function now going to a family function what benefits it can give to an individual if it's there then the uh, youth will be a little more proactive in going and attending the function rather than just telling them uh, that you know you have to attend the family function because it's your obligation when you uh, when you uh, mold this situation in that way it is difficult for them to internalize it but when you make the rewards apparent in the situation then it is uh you know there is more chance that this aspect will be internalized in a voluntary way and they will repeat this behavior again and again and the cognitive changes are both uh, understood by nature and nurture that is both by like the biological systems that are there inside us 
how they uh, uh, you know support these uh, cognitive changes and how stimulating the environment is so next slide so these are the uh, three important uh, cognitive changes that take place uh, in uh, uh, the youth age that is in adolescence and young adulthood the former operational uh, uh, thinking basically includes things like um, deductive logic that is applying general principle to you know a particular uh, thing so it helps like uh, in uh, if i take the example of academics it really this kind of thinking really helps in subjects like science and uh, maths then you have abstract thought that is uh, you know when things are not present in front of you you start, start thinking in terms of symbols then you have problem solving ability that is you know applying solution by trial and error and arriving at a particular solution and then you have hypothetical deductive reasoning this is actually the highest form of cognitive thinking that you have that is you uh, are thinking about an abstract concept and then you are arriving at the solution for that that is it's a combination of abstract thinking and deductive reasoning symbolic representation is basically uh, looking at presentation of different things in terms of different symbols and thinking about them and zone of proximal development is basically your aspect where you have a particular potential to uh, understand things and uh, hello so i'm not able to see my ppt is it uh, visible to all the others no 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 ma yeah yeah now it's okay ma okay so zone of proximal development is the uh, area where uh, the development uh, potential is a uh, maximum and it is aided on by the people that are there in the environment so uh, this is also a very this is a, actually an interface where the cognitive changes also require environment stimulation so all these aspects are at their peak when it comes to youth so next slide okay now socio emotional changes are one of the paramount aspects when it comes to um, uh, you know adolescence and uh, youth and young adults emerging adults whatever you want to term it it is an age where you have heightened emotional tension uh, uh, achieving autonomy and forming an identity is very very important importance of peer group becomes very very uh, essential and there is exploration in terms of friendships infatuation love and social success this is a, um, a change that requires both independence and support at the same time uh, independence is to you know uh, basically looking at the competencies that the youth has and support is basically the environmental stimulation that is required for achieving this independence and this Uh, the, this point emphasizes that a participatory approach works the best for youth. That is, it should be you know, um, uh, participatory approach gives them the support that they want as well as the feeling of independence that they want to exhibit in their uh, uh, in their decisions. So next slide.
now in this picture basically there is representation of the major psycho social conflict that uh, happens in uh, adolescence and this psycho social conflict is called the intimacy versus isolation conflict now uh, here uh, the, the major question that an adolescent keeps asking himself is who am i uh the important event here is the uh, social relationships here the individual is very very conscious of uh, conscious of self and uh, the development basically happens in terms of strong sense of self that will remain with the individual throughout their life there is a sense of direction in life and the virtue that develops by resolving this conflict is called fidelity which is the ability to relate to others and form genuine relationships those who are not able to resolve this uh, conflict are unsure and tend to drift and also there is a low sense of personal cohesiveness in them so for an intact sense of self this Uh, it is very important to resolve this conflict and also develop the when you are secure in yourself then only you will be able to relate to others so that's why this conflict needs to be resolved so next slide this is the next conflict that needs to be resolved it is basically intimacy versus isolation now in this stage we generally focus on making enduring connections with people positive relationships with family and friends and also create supportive networks uh the important tasks of this particular uh, stage include being intimate caring for others and making commitments sir next slide <coughs> see the four major social uh, social emotional concerns of the youth who we have already discussed uh, third one is the pre conventional moral development now where the while the other two basically look at the uh, uh, you know resolving of conflict psychological conflicts that are there the uh, post conventional uh, moral development basically looks at the principles the ideals the idea of justice the idea of uh, what is ethical and what is not ethical in terms of how um, the individual is making those ideals for himself not borrowed from friends not borrowed from parents but his or her sense of uh, you know justice and sense of idea that is there sense of uh, uh, faith that's there uh, uh, around him so this is a very important uh, thing that needs to be formulated during this uh, stage when you have misplaced sense of right and wrong uh, and uh, you know misplaced sense of justice that is when you know youth tend to become more destructive and uh, engage in more um, uh you know uh, uh uh things which are considered to be hostile in the uh, societal setup and the last one is the social clock social clock is basically at this particular age you are expected to perform these functions in this way fulfill these responsibilities fulfill these duties uh all these things come in social clock which is again a very important part of the socio emotional concerns of the youth so next slide now coming to the different perspectives that are there on youth in the generation perspective uh, it is very clearly written that youth are different from children and adults and this differentiation comes from the uh, socialization that the youth does so this perspective 
clearly emphasizes on the society that is there around the youth and how the youth is going to interact with them and thus uh, you know help in making a, a, a better life for themselves so the problems that are there in and around the youth are actually helping them to uh, become more creative and become more innovative and also uh, this socialization helps in uh, making them conform to the societal norms but based on rational thinking that is it is not just being blindly followed but it is based on certain principles so next slide now uh, the transitional perspective base, uh, basically says that there are multiple transitions that need to be made during this period that is the person has to transi transition from school uh, to college to work to relationships so these are very very uh, you know important milestones that are there and the two important areas here are work and relationships there is crystallization of vocational choice that is being made here and um, the the rapidly changing labor market and post secondary education opportunities is also you know uh, making this process more difficult and more dynamic and there are myriad of opportunities available to the youth so next one now the last perspective talks about how uh, you know the uh, view that the youth has about the different aspects in the society and different things in the society needs to be changed now there is prevalent negative perceptions about the youth saying that the youth is confused uh, youth uh, is very destructive youth is very hostile so this kind of information is in and around the uh, youth that's there so it kinds of you know kind of translates into a negative self talk um, uh, which is not good for the health of the youth so this perspective basically says that there is a need of positive stereotyping that is a need of the r that is basically including the uh, uh, positive terms being associated with the youth like treating the youth as a social resource uh, 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 treating the youth as a technologically advanced population uh treating the youth as an optimistic independent population so these are the things that need to be uh, emphasized on in the environment of the youth so that this kind of positive stereotyping can be uh, increased and uh, obviously there is very uh, grave uh, uh, consequences of uh, you know negative stereotyping which you know impacts the self confidence self esteem self concept of the individual and one other way that uh, uh, the positive stereotyping can be uh, increased is by collective understanding based on experiences that is you know you set you make teams you uh, uh, and assign a particular goal and then you say that as a team you have to achieve this goal so this becomes a collective experience for the group and that uh, uh, and when the uh, achievement is complete then it gives a sense of achievement to them so this kind of thing also needs to be promoted forming identity through exercising agency that is uh, uh, when they actually function in the environment when they use their resources which are there with them both mental and physical resources they it helps in making them their identity and uh, there needs to be an active focus on education welfare and development so next slide so uh, uh, this is actually the summary of whatever we have uh, discussed till now which is basically the lessons which we learned from 
the different perspectives and the changes and the global scenario that we have discussed where we see youth as a social resource rather than you know an age which needs to be which is an age of storm and stress and which needs to be uh, you know controlled and managed rather than that youth can be seen as a social resource and there should be attention on positive aspects of youth uh, rather than only the uh, problem areas that they have uh, our current youth is actually in a uh, positive setup because we anyway are living in a multicultural society so multicultural society also um, helps in uh, you know reducing the biases which are there reducing the segregation and the discrimination which is there um, and you are, we should encourage our youth to youth more and more to reduce these discrepancies so that more equality can be promoted more collectivistic uh, uh, attitude can be promoted uh, one of the major ways where you can reduce uh, pre pre prejudice is by making superordinate goals where you have a common vision you have a common mission and through which you are able to uh, strive better so uh, uh, and uh, the structural inequalities which are there in our society can be better tackled in this way then we are going to emphasize the positive stereotyping in a youth and we are uh, you know encouraging them to be in the multicultural society and of all this when we are able to balance each of these aspects then we are helping in creation of a group of heterogeneous talents with a homogeneous vision so uh, uh, youth as a resource can help in taking our uh, nation to greater heights so uh, with this i come to the end of my presentation so next slide and uh, thank you so much for the patient uh, listening